Hey everyone, it's Brennan the Paleo Dude here with a very special review. Um, I decided to order a Beasts of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian figure, and I've actually never bought one of these figures before. I've always wanted to get one, um, but I've been waiting for the perfect figure, and turns out they released this amazing, beautiful Ceratopsian, the Pachyrhinosaurus Lucustae, and it was the most gorgeous sculpt most beautiful coloration, and one of my favorite Ceratopsians, so I knew I just had to get it. Um, I pre-ordered it, it was like uh, 85, and then plus shipping and tax, so it was around 110, 105 dollars Canadian, which is not bad. This is a huge figure. It's absolutely massive. Dwarfs the, uh, the Mattel Pachyrhinosaurus. Um, it might be hard to see right now. Whoops, and there goes the Albertosaurus. Rip. Anyways, um, you can see that it's quite massive. Like, the body alone is huge. And once we get it out of package, um, obviously it'll be uh, easier to um, compare these two, but it is stunning. Um, I don't know, words can't describe how beautiful it is. It's just too good. Um, you can see some of the scales on there have separate um, coloration. I gotta stop saying. Um, uh, <laughs> there we go again. Um, there's a very nice wash on it, like this darker kind of color, and I absolutely love the lighter kind of greeny blue turquoisey looking colors on the bottom and the head, along with this orangey brown finish. It's absolutely beautiful. Just, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I man, it's it's like the best figure I've ever seen, and. Yeah. I'm just vibrating. The second I got it, I was like, holy cow, is it massive and stunning. Okay, so on the back here, we have the um, chart of the Wave 2 checklist. I'm pretty sure there's more in the Wave 2, uh, but I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't really keep on top of these things, but I remember there's also like a glow-in-the-dark Zuni Ceratops, two of them in fact, and uh, I think Triceratops, that might be like wave three. I do remember um, there's wave three and it has a few of them in it too. But there is a Pachyrhinosaurus, big boy, very chonk. Um, I do love the artwork on the back. All these drawings of the figures look really beautiful instead of just using uh, photos of the figures. Um, it says what it includes, it's got the logo. And the box art and the box itself is really amazing. Um, they put a lot of effort, work, and detail into it, and it gives off a very action figure -y vibe, if that makes sense. Um, it, it has this sliding part here with the information on the Pachyrhinosaurus, the number, um, and I'm assuming this is a photo of the collectible card inside. It's got the details of this animal. A nice little brief paragraph, um, the artist's name, and on the sides of the packaging, we've got the Beasts of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series um, logo with this beautifully drawn Triceratops. Um, on the bottom, there's some more information, and on the top, I think it says the age range, and if you move this, the ceratops scene. The triceratops is underneath. And there's more information on this. 20 points of articulation, realistic movement and detail, uh, profile card included, number 18, and the name. That is, wow, optimal amount of effort. I definitely should invest more in this series. Um, I'm excited for their Tyrannosaur lineup. Um, definitely want to get like a Gorgosaurus or Albertosaurus because soon I'll be living in Alberta. So these will be perfect shelf models. Um, and great for photography as well. That is just beautiful artwork. Okay, I just can't get over the box as well. It's everything about this is too perfect. Um, so I'll just open this up. I think it's kind of difficult to get out of package, but we'll see. Um, I might need to cut it, might not. It also said it includes like a backdrop, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna move this down to the ground. You can see without it, there's this like kind of cutaway piece. And the tail, I have to connect. So I just slide the plastic out. There we go. And you can see the box without the uh, figure inside has this really nice sort of 
it looks like the area around where I live right now, British Columbia, um, with like rocky streams, lots of moss, and various different species of trees. So I'm definitely going to take this figure out to some locations that look exactly like this and get some really nice photography. Um, some really nice photos. I think the card's on the side here, and there it is. It's quite small, I was expecting it to be a little bigger. It's just taped onto the side, so we'll just take that off right now. Put the tape there. Um, how are we going to open this little baggie, I guess from the top here? Oh, there we go, it opens just like that. What's this? What's going on here? It looks like a ceratopsian tail and a mug. Do not force stiff joints. Apply low heat to allow movement. Oh, okay, so if the tail isn't snapping in properly, you can heat it up in warm water and pop it in. Dip tail hole in hot water or heat with hair dryer for 20 seconds. Attach a tail joint to the ball joint of the figure. Oh, that's so cool! They, they include a little tip, so people don't like break their pretty expensive figure. That's actually really neat that they included that detail. Um, again, so much work and effort, so much detail in this. Oh, I love this card. Um, the line's too expensive, me, uh, too expensive for me to fully collect, I think, but I definitely will probably get one or two other ceratops scenes now that I know these figures are just <laughs> incredibly beautiful. Even the photography on the back of the card with the figure is absolutely out of this world. Um, it includes the same information as the um, this thing right here. And this is pretty cool. I'm going to put this on the shelf too next to it. Um, so we got the card there. I'll put the card down. Now let's get to this bad boy. We got the small ceratopsian-esque tail, so let's just take this out. I think I'm gonna actually clip. So let's see. Um, should I clip the back? The front. I don't want to damage the paint in any way, so I'm just gonna pull it out a little bit. Just snip. Just like that, we have the tail. It's a little rubbery. Um, oh wow, that's nice, it's a nice detail. And you can see each one of the little nodes on the back, these little bumps here, are painted. It's got this really nice color on the bottom. Man, I can't get over the color combo. This was the best color to choose for the figure. Like, I would not have wanted it any other way. Okay, so let's get the leg out. These seem to be wires, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tread carefully there and assume that I need to do something over here. Yep. So we got to. I wonder if I could just cut those. I don't think so. I'm gonna try. I'll try one of the tips first, so I don't screw anything up. Yeah, I can cut that. Okay. We're gonna cheat. Perfect. Um, this one I don't think I can slip the thing under, it's such an odd shape. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna have to do this one manually. Not too hard. Oh, it's just gonna fall right out in it. There we go. Yeet the packaging. Oh, it's a heavy figure too. Okay, wow. Wow, wow, wow. That is massively, that's thick, look at that. Very, very heavy, okay. Um, I gotta learn the, uh, <laughs> the, to like where this figure how how bendable it is you know uh, get used to like 
the range of movements. So let's pop the tail in. I heard it's quite hard, so we're going to uh, we're going to dry our best. If not, I'll get some hot water going. But let's keep our fingers crossed that it will. Oh, and this just moves. Okay. <laughs> this is going to make it increasingly difficult. Um, let's move the camera angle a little bit. And it kind of sucks that I don't have, like, arm strength to begin with. Like, that would help a lot. Um, how much force do I have to apply? Oh, and almost got there. Okay, um, don't have that good of arm strength. We, uh, found that out. So, I'm going to quickly run inside, and I'll get some hot water going, and I'll attach this tail, and I'll meet you guys back out here. BRB. Okay, and I'm back. So I had to use the hot water trick, and it worked pretty well. I still had to apply quite a lot of force, but um, it eventually popped in, and you can see it's got some articulation up and down, which is really nice. So <laughs> let's get to... Um, the figure seems to be made out of, like, pretty rubbery material, which is really interesting. Like, it's not a hard plastic at all. It's, um, yeah, it has some give to it, I think, in all the parts, actually, which is really nice. Like, um, I think that's a better material than most to use for figures like this, and I was not expecting it at all. I, I don't know what I was expecting, really, but it's nice to see that it's got that softness to it. You can see... The um, joints, inside the joints, are even painted and detailed. Um, something you don't see most movable figures, which is really cool. Makes it blend a little bit more smoothly, especially for when you're taking photos. Um, I want to see the range of the neck articulation, because it seems like it can go up and down quite a way, but maybe not. Um, I don't want to force anything, but... I'm sure that nothing will really snap because it's again has that like give to it. The jaw can open and close, so you can see like that. It's pretty cute. You can look inside. Even the teeth are painted, despite being quite hard to see them. Um, we've got the large bulbous uh, nose horn thing on the front, and the spikes on the kind of middle section of the frill and I love the ones on the top how they point in two different directions it's one of my favorite parts of uh, the Pachyrhinosaurus frill so let's close the mouth you gotta like push it in so it doesn't clip on the uh, top beak the legs while I was pushing it in I had to like move them but I found out they've got quite a lot of uh, movement they're kind of on like this sideways angle ball joint, which is really nice for making the figure look like it's running. Um, I wonder if these are ball joints, too. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna have to test out all these um, articulation points, because, like, I've seen in most photos, they're, like, pretty dynamic. But again, I just, I'm a little apprehensive on how far I can actually push. Or if anything's too stiff and then you push too hard. Um, but the ankles here have quite a lot of movement. Look at that. They're on little ball joints too. Put the back legs like this. And I think one of my favorite parts of this figure as well is the, the stances you can do with the front legs. Because they are quite long for this dinosaur. You can rotate it like so. Oh, you can see a little bit of the joint there, so let's try and move it forward. Oh, there we go. And then back. 
And this is on a swivel too. So let's kind of have the back legs bent a little. Like that. Oh, and it's got articulation at the waist. Yo, that's so cool. Look at that. It can rotate side to side. And the body kind of moves to, to like make way for this pushing on it, which is nice. I think you can kind of go side to side as well with it. Whoa, it's a lot. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, so the waist has uh, articulation, <laughs> really nice. Um, not something you see with a lot of figures like this. And there we go. I'm going to stop posing it and just leave it for a second. So uh, let's get to the size comparison now. There we go. Now you can see it is absolutely dwarfed. Plus, it makes the Mattel Pachyrhinosaurus look like it has no neck. Because <laughs> look at the length of the neck on this guy in comparison. It's so long. Um, they've got pretty similar crests. Mattel did the pretty typical crest appearance. You can see this one, of course, is more elaborate with color and shape. Um, but there's a lot of similarities with these figures. Especially these, the usage of these larger um, scales on the back. You can see with uh, this figure... The Beast of the Mesozoic has the colored darker scales, which make them stand out. A very nice detail. And then you can see the Mattel figure also has these larger scales as well. Um, and these little details here. I like that on Ceratops scenes. They've got that little horn sticking out the side of the jaw on the top. Now let's see in comparison to a uh, human figure. <laughs> Holy cow, it's massive. Um, towering over top. Got its head raised right at head level with the human. Um, not sure if that's in scale. I'm not sure if uh, Pachyrhinosaurus is that large. I'd have to look into it. But it's pretty massive uh, in comparison to the Mattel one. Uh, whenever I visit the Tyrell Museum in Alberta, the Royal Tyrell, rather, um, they're usually around this big. <laughs> I think this is a more pop, probably more accurate scale, but again, I'm not sure how large they actually get. Um, now let's see, compared to the largest Ceratops seen in the Mattel lineup, the uh, Sinoceratops, it is still a lot larger. It's got longer legs, that's for sure. You can see on the front here. But the heads are a similar size, actually. Which is quite interesting. Yeah, look at that. They've got a similar size head. And I think the bodies might be around the same. If not, this one's slightly smaller. Just by a tad bit, I'd say. But again, those legs are definitely longer, necks definitely longer, um, tails slightly longer. So that is just such a beautifully sized figure. Uh, got a lot of weight, not too thin. And let's see next to the Mattel Troodon, which is absolutely tiny next to it. <laughs> That's going to be good for some photography, that for sure. Um, I'm just excited. I'm thinking, I'm going over all the possibilities of what I could do with this figure. There's so many nice locations in my area uh, with the perfect environment, perfect setting for this figure. Oh, I love the highlights. You can see there's a little bit of lighter, kind of um, sandy, yellowy color as well, highlighted on some of the legs and the head around the crest region, or crest, <laughs> frill region. Um, I think there's might be a little bit of scuffing like there one of the one of the scales has paint worn off so it might be nice to touch this figure up a tad bit i think the toes also might be suffering from that 
not that big of a deal, not that noticeable. Um, so overall, I definitely rate this figure 10 out of 10, would definitely recommend its um, price is on point. I would not see this going for any more, any less. It's the perfect price range. Um, I'm excited to uh, get some of the Theropods in the other lineups. Um, I saw on their Instagram that they're making smaller Raptor figures um, and again eventually Tyrannosaurs. So if I can get some Alberta uh, Dromaeosaurs, some Alberta Theropods, that would be absolutely wicked. Um, and I can't wait to do, again, photography with this figure. It's just mind-blowingly awesome. <laughs> There's not much I can uh, elaborate on how spectacular it is to own this figure in person and just the, the sheer mass, the colors, the details, the articulation, everything about it makes it one of the most perfect dinosaur figures ever to exist. Like, my goodness, look at the eye and the sur just everything about it. The details, the colors, it's stunning. It's amazing. I, I think every collector who's aiming for this line or any collector who collects similar figures should have this one in their collection. Um, and I'm excited to see what Beast of the Mesozoic has planned for future lineups, future dinosaurs. And uh, I'm definitely excited to invest in more of these figures in the long run, um, especially for doing like displays, dioramas, photography, stuff like that, because it is just stunning, beautiful, absolutely amazing. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this review as much as I did. Um, it was definitely fun uh, unboxing it, because definitely nothing like I've ever done before, and just the package alone was so much fun, so cool. Uh, the details on it, the amount of effort and work they put into art and, and layout of everything and design. It's just incredible. Um, yeah, so definitely going to do more videos in the future on these figures if I get my hands on them. So again, um, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and follow or subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.